Hello and welcome to Top Plays. I am Blue from CantoCast, and this is the series where we take a look at some of the best plays from the weekly matches during Season 5 of the GBA. Well fans, we had another semi-weird week this time around, but Top Plays will be pulling in a Top 5 this time. While not all the plays listed may seem as exciting as the next, they were all helpful for the teams during the match, so with that in mind, let's get to the plays. At number 5 this week, we're looking at Toxic Spike's Nido Queen from the Arcaniners Reggie Rockies match. With threats like Diggersby, Feraligator, and Chansey on the Reggie Rockies team, the Arcaniners knew Toxic Spikes would be the key to stopping any potential sweeps or stalls. So turn 1, the Toxic Spikes get set up, and throughout the match, they work their magic. Except for those two times. Seriously though. Two Pokemon living on practically 1 HP from poison damage? Talk about a party foul. We still love you, Drew. Anyway, despite Nidoqueen making only a brief appearance to set up Toxic Spikes in the beginning of the match, it was sort of poetic to have it come in and claim the last KO to seal the match at the end of the game. The Arcaniners' calculated play granted them a 2-0 win over the Regirockies. The number 4 spot this time around takes us down a somewhat familiar road. A road where we remember that Manaphy is a monster. An adorable, seemingly harmless monster. If you're not prepared for Tail Glow Manaphy, it's gonna hurt. A lesson we observed from the Red Sox Sea Kings match. After Manchow's crash and burn, Manaphy comes to the Red Sox rescue to take down the Porygon 2 that was causing them so many problems. After Tail Glow gets set up, Manaphy was able to two hit KO Porygon 2. After that, it's able to two hit KO Mega Sableye after living a knockoff. Then it takes out Breloom with an Ice Beam to rack up its third KO for the game. Manaphy was then taken down after Darmanitan executed a Flare Blitz, but by that point it was too late for the Seekings to rally. Thanks to the Manaphy Mini Sweep, the Red Sox take home a 4-0 win for the week. For the number 3 play this week, we have a play from the Piratitas Haluchas game, and it demonstrates that the Piratitas have yet to stop predicting plays. After burning Chestnut with Arcanine, the Piratitas predict a Leech Seed and go out into Celebi. With Leech Seed nullified, Celebi goes for Psychic and hits Chestnut hard. In return, Chestnut attacks with a Pin Missile and despite getting 3 hits off, it does minimal damage at best because of its burn and Celebi's physically defensive build. A clever play to take down a pretty reliable Pokemon on the Halucha's side. At the number 2 spot this week, we have a highlight from the Steel Wings Dawn fan match, and no, it's not Suicune. It's actually Dusclops. Early in the match, Dusclop comes in attempting to Will-O-Wisp Drudigan, but it switches out for Slowking. Now Slowking is in and there's no hope of escape. After taking a Psy Shock like a champ, Dusclop uses Infestation to trap Slowking. With burn and infestation damage taking its toll, it only takes one Nightshade to take Slowking down. With an early lead and a wall on the opposing side gone, the Steel Wings use this momentum to take home an eventual 2-0 win, which gives them their first win of the season, so a special congratulations to the Detroit Steel Wings for that. And finally, the number one play this week is another moment from the Haluchas Piratas game, but this one comes to us from the side of the Haluchas. In a team matchup where bringing sand seems like a bad idea, the Haluchas do it anyway. And what's more impressive is that the sand setter you'd think would be their undoing actually takes out the Excadrillion threat. I'm talking about Nuh, but maybe it should be named Yuh. As in, Yuh. That was one of the ballsiest things I've seen in a while. Not only did Scarf Tyranitar pick up 4 KOs this game, it took out an Excadrill. In sand without even using Earthquake. How? It speed crept. The only way the Piratitas Excadrill could outspeed the Halucha's Scarf Tyranitar was by being max speed, and it wasn't. Not only that, Sticky Web was there to help out as well. As it turns out, Tyranitar just barely outsped the Excadrill, but just barely was all it needed. With Nut in tow, the Haluchas were able to pick up a 2-0 win, as well as give us a rare spectacle a Tyranitar beating an Excadrill in sand. And now it's time to look at the reigning top play of Season 5. We've seen Caliente dominate the entire season, and this week it's no different. 
In the end, Jellicent was unable to deceive Entei, and so its reign of domination continues. But now the time has come yet again for you, the fans, to decide if that reign continues for another week. Can Caliente be dethroned by the speed-creeping Tyranitar? Or will Tyranitar get outpaced by Entei like so many before it? You decide by voting via the straw poll link in the description. And while you're down there, feel free to comment on what your top plays for Week 7 were. But that's going to wrap things up for this week. I am CantoCast Blue, and I will catch you next week with more top plays from Season 5 of the GBA.